Hello, hello! It's me, Teacher Susan from Exploding Chemistry. Today, we are going to look into thermochemistry and the heat of precipitation. What is precipitate? Precipitate is an insoluble ionic compound. I give you four examples of insoluble ionic compound together with their colors. How does this precipitate form? It is formed through a chemical reaction between two solutions and the chemical reaction can be either called as precipitation reaction or double decomposition reaction. A general definition for heat of precipitation is heat change when one mole of precipitate is formed from its ion in the solutions. Normally in SPM, they will ask you to calculate the heat of precipitation. So how are we going to start off? If you are given a pair of solution as rectum, there are four steps that you always have to remember. Number one, form a balanced chemical equation. Number two, write out its ionic equation. Number three, identify the precipitate. And number four, identify the color of the precipitate before we can moving on to the calculation steps. When we are into calculation steps, what are the items that we need? Number one, we have to calculate the number of moles for the precipitate form. Number two, look for the total volume of both solution as our M. And number three, calculate the temperature change. There are three formulas involved in the calculation for the delta H. Number 1, MV per 1000. Number 2, Q, which is heat change, equals to MC delta. And number 3, delta H equals to Q over N, which is heat of reaction. Now, let's have a look at this question. We are using this question to proceed on for our calculations for delta H for your better understanding. Before we can proceed on for the calculation, there are two assumptions that we have to remember. Number one, specific heat capacity of the solution is always equal to 4.2. And the density of the solution is equal to the density of water, which is 1 gram per cm cube. Alright, now allow me to show you all the steps involved in the calculation for heat of precipitation between silver nitrate solution as well as sodium chloride solution. Step 1, we are going to find out the number of moles for silver nitrate solution and sodium chloride solution. Both of them are having the same concentration as well as the same volume. So based on the formula MV divided by 1000, which we have already learned in Form 4, we are able to calculate 0.0125 mole for our silver nitrate solution. And since the sodium chloride is having the same concentration and also the same volume, therefore, they are producing the same number of mole as well. Based on our balanced chemical equation, one more of silver ion react with one more of chloride ion to form one mole of silver chloride precipitate. So therefore, in the end of the experiment, we are going to form 0.0125 mole of silver chloride precipitate in the same time because they are in the one-to-one -one ratio. Step 2, we are going to find out the temperature change. Before we can start off with the temperature change, we need to find out the average initial temperature. We have 28 degrees Celsius from the silver nitrate solution and 29 degrees Celsius from the sodium chloride solution. So therefore, the average initial temperature will be 28.5 degrees Celsius. 
and the temperature change here, we will take the final temperature which is 33.1 minus average initial temperature. So what did we get? We will get 4.6 degrees Celsius as our temperature change. Next step, we are going to find out, okay, next step, we are going to find out the heat change. Heat change formula, Q equals to MC theta. The M is the total mass from the total volume of two solution. As we know that 1 cm cube of the solution is almost equivalent to 1 gram of the solution. So therefore, when we total up the volume from both solutions, we have 25 plus 25. And the heat capacity that given is always a constant, which is 4.2. Multiply the heat, the temperature change. So we are going to get 966 Joule of heat change. Convert the Joule into kilojoule by dividing 1000. So we are going to get 0 0.966 kilojoule heat change. Last step, we are going to calculate the delta H, which is the heat of precipitation. So we take the Q divided by the number of mole. So we have 0 0.966 kilojoule divided by 0 0.0125 mole of precipitate form. So after we divide, our answer will be 77.28 kilojoule per mole but this is not the end yet because when we refer to the questions it says that the final temperature is 33.1 but the initial temperature average initial temperature is only 28.5 it shows that final temperature is higher than the initial temperature past this is exothermic reaction for exothermic reaction we have to add in a symbol negative indicates heat release to the environment after we have completed the calculation for the delta h the heat of reaction the following steps require us to draw energy level diagram for energy level diagram we always start from a y-axis label the y-axis with energy and since just now from the calculation delta h carry a symbol negative which means heat release to the environment when it is an exothermic reaction energy contained of reactants must always higher than energy contained of product arrow pointing downward okay this is the profile that we should have before we fill in the blank so what should we fill in here we have to complete the chemical reaction for chemical formula for your reactants as well as your product we can use both ionic equation or balanced chemical equation to fill in in our energy level profile so here we have the silver ion react with the chloride ion to form silver chloride precipitate lastly we have to fill up the delta h which is negative 77.28 kilojoule per mole so this is how we produce the energy profile for our heat of precipitation lastly we are going to write a balanced thermochemical equation what is a thermochemical equation it is a chemical equation added in with your delta H. We have two ways of writing our thermal chemical equation. Simplest way based on ionic equation that we have add in the delta H negative 77.28 kilojoule per mole. Method 2. Okay, second method. A balanced chemical equation. Okay, method number two, we can always use our balanced chemical equation. And we add in the delta 
delta H. So this is how we produce our thermochemical equation. Alright, so here we go. Okay, this is the answer for our thermochemical equation and also our energy level profile. Alright, well done everyone. We have just complete the calculation steps for the heat of precipitation for silver chloride. I hope this video can make you feel better and understand better. Thank you for your watching. Love my video, share it out, and also subscribe my YouTube channel Rambo Susan. Do not forget to hit the notification bell for more videos for you. Thank you.